Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. I'm sure you've all heard about the Panama Papers by now, so I won't go into a great deal of elaboration about what they are or the basic background. If you do need that, well, you can flip to any mainstream source, of website, newspaper, channel, what have you, and I'm sure they'll be all talking about it right now, and you'll have your fill very soon. So, suffice it to say... About a year ago, an anonymous source contacted the Süddeutsche Zeitung and submitted encrypted internal documents from Mossack Fonseca, a Panamanian law firm that sells anonymous offshore companies around the world. And these shell firms enable their owners to cover up their business dealings, no matter how shady. And this isn't just any leak, this is 2.6 terabytes of data. And just to put that in perspective, that's more than Cablegate and offshore leaks and Luxembourg and Swiss leaks combined many times over. It's a lot of data. Of course, you don't get to look at that data. This data has been provided, however, to over, over around 400 journalists from more than 100 media organizations in over 80 countries that have taken part in a 12-month investigation tearing this data apart and... Uh, reporting on it, and they've uh, coordinated their reporting, so they're now all reporting on it at the same time, and The Guardian, and the BBC, and Le Monde, and La Nation, and all of these other papers and, uh, and news outlets around the world. So, we're starting to see some of that reporting spilling out, and of course you can go to the Deutsche Zeitung's uh, page about this, and I'll put the link, of course, in the show notes, so you can go and take a look, and Probably the first uh, story that a lot of people will see is this story about Iceland, where uh, the Prime Minister has been under fire for his uh, shady business dealings um, as a result of this, and is now facing calls to resign, although apparently the latest is that he has rejected those calls, but still obviously a developing story. And uh, after you go to the Deutsche Zeitung site, where they have all of the, the latest information and the different reports that are going on, you can go to the ICIJ site, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, which was the organization that the Deutsche Zeitung turned to when they re started receiving this data. And uh, th this is the organization that's coordinated these 400 journalists and provided them with the, the data. But of course, again, not provided you with the data. You can't see these documents, but uh, the newspapers are reporting on them, so trust them. So you can go to the ICIJ site and they have a big write-up on, on this and handy-dandy infographics showing which foreign uh, country leaders have been implicated either directly or by association. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Because, of course, uh, the other aspect of this that you will have noticed by now, it's not just people like the Prime Minister of Iceland who are being implicated in this, but, of course, it's going to be the, the targets of the U.S. State Department, including this from the ICIJ directly, who put together a video talking about the victims of the offshore, you know, accounts, the secret shell companies that are implicated in these Panama, Panama Papers. And it's, uh, you know, the victims include, of course, the people killed in the Syrian war. Because, well, just listen to this very curiously unproblematic telling of the Syrian war from the, pa uh, from the ICIJ. Over the past three years, Syria's air force has ranged death on more than 21,000 civilians. Their bodies ripped apart by exploding barrel bombs, missiles dropped on homes, businesses, bus stops, even hospitals. These war crimes have been well documented, not so the part played by the shadowy world of offshore finance. Yes, yeah, so you get the idea. So basically they're saying, oh, Assad is just insane and is just killing his own people willy-nilly for no real reason. And of course those war crimes have been well documented by the BBC and other trustworthy sources, as this infographic shows us. Um, and they're, go, of course, going to go on and say, well, yes, but this is enabled because uh, Assad is using these offshore accounts to funnel his money. Well, technically, it's cousins of Syrian President Bashar Assad, Rami and Hafez Makhlouf, who have been implicated in this. And if you want more information on how they've been implicated, you can click on this and read some more about this. And they do have uh, some of the documents here for you to peruse, but of course, again, not all of them, just the ones they want you to see. So again, take this all with the giant grain of salt that it deserves to be taken with, but uh, there's some interesting things to at least start perusing there. But Again, it's all the way they frame it. Oh, you know, those uh, crazy Syrian government is just killing its own people willy-nilly, just dropping barrel bombs, just like there's no tomorrow, because they're crazy. And uh, and this is why we have to be upset about these offshore accounts. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, that's, of course, one of the aspects of this, but probably the one that you've seen is, 
of course, well, Putin. Putin is hiding uh, billions of dollars offshore. And this is all blowing up in his face. This amazing leak of data that's coming of all of these different foreign leaders. It's childhood friends of Russian President Putin and close friend of Russian President Putin have been implicated in this. And, well, they're obviously going that extra limb and saying it's Putin itself. And the stupidest, most ridiculous example I found of this is from The Guardian. You have to see it to believe it. It is really nothing other than spooky music combined with some third-rate infographics. Oh, we'll listen to that. Oh, it's the St. Petersburg House of Music. Are you afraid? Look at these dastardly terrorists, and then the James Bond music kicks in. Oh, things, the plot is thickening now. Listen to the music. Okay, well, this is getting difficult to understand in infographic form, but oh, at least there's the musical cues to keep us keep us on track here. Oh, it's those British Virgin Isles where they don't have privacy laws, da, da, da. or where they do have privacy laws. Anyway, you get the idea. It just it goes on and on like this, with all of these different dots being connected to show that well, obviously then it's Putin <laughs> and. Uh, it, uh, all of the, the reporting that uh, tries to connect Putin to this is, well, curiously, perhaps not so curiously, uh, inept um, in the way that it portrays this. Um, using language that is, shall we say, not exactly the type of language that instills a lot of confidence. For example, in this ICIJ report, it says the $200 million loan that they're talking about here was one of dozens of transactions totaling at least $2 billion found in the Mossack Fonseca files involving people or companies linked to Putin. They formed part of a Bank Russia enterprise that gained indirect influence over a major shareholder in Russia's biggest truck maker and amassed secret stakes in a key Russian media property. Suspicious payments made by Putin's cronies may have, <laughs> may have in some cases, been designed as payoffs, possibly in exchange for Russian government aid or contracts. The secret documents suggest that much of the loan money originally came from a bank in Cyprus that at the time was majority owned by the Russian state-controlled VTB bank. It goes on like this for some time with all of these perhaps and may haves and suggests and <laughs> possibly's that again shows that there is no there there and at least no smoking gun like they're trying to portray this as. So if you've smelled a bit of propaganda in the way that this is being covered, well, congratulations, I think you're right, and you don't have to go very far uh, to dig around to see why this is happening in this way, uh, why it seems Assad and uh, Gaddafi and Putin and people like this are being outed as these front company using henchmen. Uh, well, who is a, the ICIJ? Well, if you click on the about, you get to the page where you find out what they do and who they are and Blah, blah, blah. Our supporters, recent ICIJ funders include, oh, Open Society Foundation. Hmm, where have I heard of that before? Oh, the Ford Foundation. Oh, Waterloo. All of these wonderful foundations are supporting the work of this, and it just so happens that they're, oh, you know, they're, they're targets. The, the people that they've found the, the goods on are either directly in the crosshairs of the State Department or people that are really just collateral damage to the State Department or people that they might just want to hold something over. Uh, the King of Saudi Arabia, for instance, when you click on here and you read about what he's been implicated in, well, it really amounts to using a front company to have purchased some real estate in London. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly the, the most insidious thing that you could possibly imagine considering the types of you know, committing 9-11 or uh, elite pedophile rings or the types of things that these types of politically connected figures are up to their eyeballs in. Buying some real estate in London through a shell company doesn't seem like it's, uh, you know, quite earth-shattering information. But anyway, I think it's all just part and parcel of the the, uh, the, 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 the trend recently to make sure that the Saudis know that we have some things up our sleeves. You don't want to go too far off the reservation. Anyway, all of this is to say that this leak 
it is, it really does appear to be a new type of warfare, or at least a continuation of the type of warfare we've seen in recent years where leaks come out. And these leaks often seem to implicate the State Department's enemies in various shady dealings. Isn't it funny how that works? And uh, as I say, I think there are intelligence operations behind this type of thing, and that's why when this type of leak comes out, it's it, uh, at not one single of prominent American is implicated in any of this. No, 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 no one from the U.S. would use shell companies to do something like this. It is uh, patently ridiculous. And as one commenter on one of the anti-Putin propaganda stories that I saw today said, uh, well, you know, Putin did it the wrong way. If he just changed his name to Clinton and started a foundation, he could do this quite easily. And I think that's the that's the takeaway point of this. Again, uh, the crimes, or at least the implicit or perhaps... You know, we can tie this to him. Crimes will be uh, trumpeted, you know, to no end in the uh, mainstream media, whereas uh, the, the crimes of our pals, the Clintons, and other good people on our side will never be talked about. So that's the way that game works, has always worked. And this isn't to say that because uh, this is clearly being used for propagandistic purposes that it isn't true. I don't know. I think there may be something to this. I'd like to see more of the documentation and get into it myself. Um, I, I wouldn't surprise me in the least if characters like Putin and Assad had millions, hundreds of millions, or billions stashed away in overseas accounts. I'm quite sure that kleptocrats of all countries do that type of thing, so it wouldn't surprise me. But again, the question is, is this leak a strategic leak? We can let this information out, and uh, it's because it will uh, implicate our enemies, and, well, it doesn't implicate our friends. Quote-unquote. Anyway, another thing that leapt out to me in all of this uh, is from this ICIJ reporting. It, they just happen to note near the very, very, very bottom of their overview of this. Mossack Fonseca's home country, Panama, has refused to embrace a plan for worldwide exchange of information about bank accounts out of concern that its offshore industry could be left at a competitive disadvantage. Panama officials say they will exchange information, but on a more modest scale. What on earth is this talking about? Well, it turns out, if you go and research this, less than two months ago, The Economist had this article out, The Problem Child, talking about Panama, those, those dirty Panamanians, won't sign on to the Common Reporting Standard, CRS, being championed by the OECD Club of Rich Nations. And when you look at that, and I will throw the link into the show notes to the uh, CRS, it is a global agreement that the OECD is working on and trying to get, uh, trying to pass around. It is a model, model piece of legislation that different countries can use uh, to talk about automatic exchange of financial account information to improve international tax compliance, which all sounds well and good because they're trying to get those dirty tax evaders. But until you find out, it means the sharing of personal, individual bank account information amongst the OECD nations. And uh, if that sounds like the beginning of a global tax structure, well, congratulations, you might remember the reporting of these two handsome young gentlemen from a couple of years ago where they talked about the global tax grid, specifically talking about the G20 summit a couple of years ago where the, the OECD was, uh, nations were originally talking about this, starting to chase tax evaders with a plan to swap data globally, talking about basically getting their paws into your bank accounts and give, finding out all about your bank account information and uh, what you hold as a way of uh, sharing that amongst all these nations. And, well, as, as you know, this is the building block for global, global taxation, which is the building block for golden global government. So it's interesting that the, the holdout, the problem child, Panama, that, would, that was refusing to go along with this, is now also conveniently in the crosshairs of the, the global spotlight right now as they start to look at, well, huh, Panama's refusing to go along with the OECD. So there's a lot of different propaganda narratives that, that uh, pile on to this. And I think it's important for us to understand that just because something is a leak, even if that information is true, it doesn't mean that it's telling you the whole truth. And getting a partial truth or a manipulated truth or a truth that is allowed to come out because that's the acceptable truth can be just as damaging as an outright lie, um, perhaps even more so. So that's the future of uh, warfare right now. This is the new type of intelligence warfare that's being waged right now, strategic leaks. And I think perhaps the best thing that we could hope for right now is if there is a retaliation, a response in kind by 
Russia or Syria or whoever might have goods on people in the West, if we start to see some leaks coming out of people in the U.S. and Britain, I would love to see the kleptocrats tearing each other down across country lines. Unfortunately, I'm not going to hold my breath and wait for that to happen, but... At any rate, that's my initial take on this Panama Papers. I'd be interested to hear your take. If you guys have uh, dug up any more nuggets on this, any, any interesting leads, any interesting stories you've seen, please do leave them in the comments. I'd be interested to see them. And let's uh, keep learning our way forward. Once again, James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.